Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and a lot of you guys are probably trying to use VS Code with AutoHotKey. For V2, you really got to use VS Code. It's amazing. Um, for V1, you definitely can use other editors, but in AutoHotKey V2, VS Code is just phenomenal. The problem comes up is that there are different extensions and how you handle them and switch between them and stuff. And so one of our hero members was having issues with this. So Isaiah walks through, one, some of the actual warnings and errors he was getting and how to adjust for them and how to basically not have many errors and use them, um, pick an extension and use it properly. So check out this video. If you like it, please like the video. It really helps us out. Have an awesome day. Check out the hero call. If you're, again, running into issues, this is where people get to pick Isaiah's brain on how to solve problems. Cheers. So Yeah, well, so if you're using VS Code, the um, yes. extension that I used for AutoHotKey is only for AutoHotKey version 2. If you open a version a script that is v1, you might oh, get a lot of little oh, pop see, yes, yes indeed. But but which which extension is is it? Um okay. that is the auto hotkey language support is called. But I I I used that already uh, 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 from the beginning. And that was not giving any problem. But I added a lot of ex, uh, a, a lot of extensions uh, due to your uh, video about uh, VS Code. But I'm not, I'm not really sure I understand what the. So I saw if, I saw a, I saw a video of you about uh, yes extensions uh, uh, for VS Code. So yes. I added those extensions. Yep. After that, I have a lot of problems. Hold on. But here's the thing, the extensions, and that's what I mentioned, the extensions that I was using, they are usually only for V2 scripts. Are you opening a V2 script or are you opening a V1 script? Well, I, I open both. Yeah, you're going to get but, errors for the V1. That's, it, that's not going to work. But it's also uh, when I open a V2 script, uh -huh. that it's complaining about v1 scripts that are in my folders and not opening it okay can you show me can you can can you show yes. your share your screen and show me what you're referring to because I, so what i'm understanding now is that you're saying you're opening a v2 script but you still get errors about yes. a v1 thing yes indeed that's what okay I'm okay depends uh, how you open it are you opening a folder or are you opening just one file just one file. No, so I'm going to tell you something. In VS Code, I normally open folders mostly, all right? I don't open specific files because if you open one file and you still have a V1 script open somewhere, it will still give you errors about that other V1 script because it keeps the V1 and the V2 in the same spot. And the extension is going to look at the V1 and say, I cannot work with it. Well, um, I, can, just... I, I can make it more. Uh, I can make more clear uh, when yes. I uh, when I shut down VS Code. I all restart right. VS Code. Right. Opening no script at all, and then uh -huh. I look, and then I get this, those messages. Let's see it. So let me show you. Let me let me let show your screen, and let's see if we can see that. Because the point is, I, I I'm suspecting something, but I cannot guarantee it unless I see the error. Okay. Right. So let me let me see what you're showing. I think he's having debugging issues and he's opening a script. So he he's supposed to open the folder in VS Code. Yeah, I think he has to open the folder. In fact, uh, you see my screen now? Yeah. These so are, this is these okay. are the messages I get. Right. These are not errors. All right. These are just warnings telling you that the the file that you're trying to open is a V1 script. Now there is a there is a there is a, a, a an not, option. I, I am not opening that file at all. I understand, but you already had it open. <laughs> no, no, no. It 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 starts immediate when I when I open VS Code without any script. Yeah, that's the reason why I need you to show me that. But let me let me give you the whole fix on that part. All right. Okay. So what you're gonna do is this. Um, I'm going to share my screen for a second here. Let me let me stop yours. Yes, okay. 
what you're going to do is that you're going to go to VS Code settings. Usually the fastest way is pressing control and the comma. Control comma yep. opens the settings. And you can go to the extensions here at the yes. bottom. Let's go to auto hotkey two. Yeah. And in here, yes. there is the first option in there is what to do when a V1 script is detected. Oh. The default here is to warn you. That's what it does. And a little pop-up keeps going and showing that. Now you oh. can switch it to different things. If you have a V1 extension, you can switch to the V1 extension, right? If you don't have the V1 extension, you can skip the line or stop parsing the whole file, all right? It depends on what you want to do. I, myself, I just click on continue. I don't get any warnings, and it would just open the file without any um, issues. But the thing is, let me show you. When you go to the extensions, let me close this up, open the extensions, right? So in the extensions, you will see I will have auto hotkey. Yes. You see that I have auto hotkey V2 language support. That's the one that I'm looking for. And that one only works for V2. And that's the one that I showed in the in the course, all right, in the videos. That's the one that I'm using. But I, ha I have I have this one already from the beginning of, of that, that I, I, I do it. Right, all mind. right. Now there's a different one that you can add which is the a AHK++, all right? Yes. Now that one has support for V1 and V2. That's ready, that I have two, I, I have that, that one too. Right, now the problem with that is if you already have the V2 and you also have this one that has V2, you will get duplicate stuff. You will see that. Okay. So what I do, is that I disable this one, I disable it, all right? Okay. And if I'm in a folder that has V1 scripts, I enable it for that folder. That's what I do, okay. right? Okay. Because normally right now, I'm not working with a lot of V1 scripts. If you are doing the opposite, like you work with a lot of V1 and you want to use the V2 sometimes, then I would just keep this one enabled and disable this one. I would do the opposite, all right? So it depends on how you work. I, I'm using always V2 because if I'm a developer and V2 is much, much, much better than V1. And right. I, I, I have to, to use V1 because of, okay, it, it, the programs are in V1. Exactly. Okay. That happens to me as well. There are some projects that we have that are in V1. So I just enable that one folder, yes. but not in the whole stuff. I usually work with V2 then. Okay. Can I okay. ask you a question on this too, yeah. Isaiah? Because the way that one of those things was worded, it says if it detects V1. My, my question is, does adding, if we are very, very good about having the requires directive in, in every file, will that help also? Yeah, yeah. So this, um, uh, this extension has its own method of detecting V1, but the requires directive is the first thing it does. So yeah. um, if you have the requires directive, it already knows. And it, switch, it switches to V1 right away if you have another extension for it. I, I've also in every script of me, I have uh, the directive of V2 or V1. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's very good. That's, I, that's actually that something that we that, recommend. I learned that very, very fast. <laughs> right so in any case that that's basically the fix to the problem okay. the only thing is another uh just going back again it's just i would definitely not open one file just because when you open one file it puts it in the already opened window that you have and correct me if i'm wrong Isaiah. this is what drives me nuts if you then close VS Code and you reopen it, it's not there. It doesn't keep <laughs> that panel open. Right? Well, you can. That's a setting, though. You can you can actually make it remember what you had open. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, I, well, maybe. VS Code is very 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 um, customizable. 
So if there's something that you don't like, it's very, very likely an option that you can say change to uh, say how it behaves when you when you start the editor, what happens when the window starts. Whenever you start with a new window, what do you want it to do? Whatever was before the default or, you know, a lot of different things that you can do. Okay. Hey. I'll, I'll, I'll try it and uh, the, maybe I come back uh, next week. <laughs> we hope you come back next week. <laughs> exactly. This, this is problem. <laughs> I will come back. <laughs> come back with some news on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah, that's a, that was a really good topic though, because I I bet you a lot of people have that same. I know I do as well. Right. I, I yeah. write. Yeah. So.